Hello everybody, this is module 5, uh, focuses on digital identity. Uh, this is the last module in the online research and media skills uh, class. Uh, and basically this module is built trying to tie all of the loose ends in together. Uh, the belief is that over the course of this entire class, you've been creating content across a variety of, you know, hopefully free online digital texts and tools. Uh, you've been creating tons of content. You've been building materials in Google Apps. And now the idea is that we need to take all of these and tie them all in together, put them in a space that you can use to help create and curate, curate your digital identity. So as an initial summary of this, what we're going to do is we're going to think about the need for educators you know, to build, construct, curate, iterate, innovate, on our digital learning hub, we want to use this as a way to promote uh, literacy and learning experiences across different texts and tools. And the idea is that we're looking for synchronicity. We're looking for one unified message. We're looking for you know a blog and a website and a hub and all of your content to basically promote your digital identity and use your digital identity as a place that students can go online. So the same way that they would see you in the halls of the classroom or see you in your classroom as you teach, they would be able to go online and get the same sort of unified message. So one of the places that I like to first start with and what motivates most of my thinking in this area is that as I've conducted research with educators, one of the things that always um, you know, concerns me is there this, is this belief that Educational technology, you know, is something that's on its way. It's something that it's very important and, you know, quote unquote, the kids do it or it's the future of society. Um, and it's something that we need to address or we need to basically find a place in our classroom for. There's this almost uh, view that, you know, technology is on its way and we need to make a room for it. Um, and, and there's very little power involved in a lot of this thinking. There's this belief that, you know, I'm an iPad school, so uh, everything I do has to direct back to the iPad, and I need to find specific apps that make the iPad work well. And it, it's, there, there's no power involved on in the part of the teacher. Now, with any other technology in our classroom, teachers would find opportunities to change or tweak that text or tool to use in teaching and learning. Um, but for some reason, technology, we, we don't view it as an opportunity for us to tweak to meet our student learning objectives. And what I would like to do is, obviously, we've talked about this in the class, is empower our students in the reader-writer nature of technology and, and digital text and tools. But more importantly, first, I like to empower teachers. I like to empower ourselves to think about our digital footprint, think about our digital identity, and we construct it. We make decisions about what we include and what we don't include. A lot of this last module involves building our online learning management system, building our digital hub, building our digital identity, and making choices about what tools we want to use, where we want to use them, building up slowly, building up content over time to really build something that's meaningful and worthwhile for our students in our classrooms. There are a lot of tools out there uh, that we can use to do this. A lot of this basically focuses on the infrastructure. One thing to keep in mind is in, in the first module we would build multimodal tutorials and the second and third and fourth modules we look at online collaborative inquiry and online reading comprehension and online content construction and there's a lot of tools that we would use across those. We might create a couple screencasts or we might uh, build an Animoto piece or something in Mozilla Popcorn. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to use some of these tools to create a, a series of pipelines or an infrastructure to connect everything. So up top I have Wikispaces and Google Sites. I think that as a teacher we should create one website that is ours. A lot of school system, systems will pay a lot of money to have a website that is housed by the school and hosted by the school. But the challenge is that there's not a lot of tech support given on how to edit and build these resources. Um, there's also, you know, they're somewhat locked down uh, 
through the instructional tech programs in the different schools. Whereas if you use a place like Wikispaces or Google Sites, not only is it something that you, for the most part, own, you know, you create the content that is added there, but at the same time, if you need tech support, there are numerous places on, online that you can go to receive this tech support. So at any point, you know, you can go to YouTube and learn how to embed a video. You can go to different supports, uh, you know, different resources to help you out. Uh, Twitter and Google is probably, uh, at least in my estimation, the best personal learning network uh, that is out there. I use both interchangeably, and I think it's an opportunity to go out, go online and learn and, and socialize and collaborate and connect with others. And more importantly, I think it's an opportunity to direct traffic through these different social networks to our learning management hub. So if my learning management hub is built in Google Sites, then I think that we can use Twitter and Google Plus and then other tools like Edmodo or email to direct people to content that we have on our learning hub. Last but not least, I think that all teachers should blog. They should have a, a separate uh, thinking space or a workspace in Blogger or Edublogs or WordPress, a place that they can openly think about decisions they might make as they create this content, as they teach, as they work with students. Um, this is a place for you, apart from your digital learning hub, to think about what you're doing as you teach. Uh, we try to build the disposition uh, dispositions in our teachers to make them healthy, reflective practitioners, well, a blogger space or someplace in Words, WordPress allows us to, as educators, go online, think about what we're doing in our classroom, and write about it. In doing this, a lot of what's happening is we're taking aspects and elements of our class and we're putting them online. The idea is that we want to provide our students with ubiquitous access to digital text and tools. We want them to be able to access these teaching materials wherever they are, regardless of what tool we're on. And one of the key components here is that we're moving to a device agnostic policy. Our kids come into our classrooms and they're on a variety of different tools. They could be on a MacBook or a Chromebook. They could be on an iPad or an Android tablet like the Nexus 7. They could be on e-readers like a Nook or a Kindle. A lot of our students use mobile phones. And then as we go into wearable technologies, we have no idea what future technologies will look like, what our students will use. They could use watches, they could use glasses. And the idea is that as we increasingly put our content online, then it really doesn't matter where the content goes, or more importantly, where our students are coming to us from. So for example, if I build my learning hub in Google Sites, Google Sites is pretty responsive. And without me even knowing it, it'll change the page and change the layout of the page to help somebody that's reading it on a smaller device like a mobile phone or obviously expand for somebody that's on a, on a tablet or a, ta or a computer. So the idea is that we increasingly put this content online and make it available for students wherever they are. There is a, a gradual series of steps Obviously, the, the term steps is used very loosely here, but the idea is that we can view this as a gradual pro, uh, process as we move our content online and build that learning management system, or we move over to a digital learning hub. The idea is that we first have one space that we put all content. And this would be a classroom website, and, and I would even think more broadly than a classroom website, I would think about this being a website for the teacher. So if I'm a teacher and I teach social studies, I might teach one year US history, and then next year I might teach world history, and then the year after that teach world history too, and then I might teach also some classes in sociology and psychology. There is no need for me to create different websites for those different areas. I would have one website for myself as the teacher and have different sections for each of those areas. The reason is, if I'm a student that's taking world history with me, maybe there's something that we're teaching or learning about that connects to another aspect that I've built up 
in psychology, world history, U.S. history, no matter what other area, I can create those connections. So you basically create an entire hub that I put all teaching and learning tools and activities on that learning space. Then the idea is we start to continuously create content. I advise teachers to start with a unit and build content that goes along with that unit. So I might have uh, a unit where I have students work and create a Mozilla popcorn at the end of the unit. I may have students uh, start with a mind map or a coggle and create some sort of mind map of a unit as a pre-learning activity and, and add that in. So we, we start to really think about what we've done in this ORMS MOOC across modules one, two, three, and four, and how we have students gradually build up content. Well, all of this content that we build, we want to ho embed in our digital learning hub. We don't want our students to be traipsing across the internet looking for the content that we left them. We want to go out and build great content online, grab those embed codes, and embed it back in the digital learning hub. Then, one of the other things that I think that we need to start doing I've, I've made this statement many times. Teachers need to be experts in screen captures and annotate, annotating screen captures and in creating screencasts. We need to be able to take screen captures or, or photos or images of what's happening on our screen and annotate those. We also need to be able to record, just like I'm doing now, a screencast. We need to use free recording software that we can use to record what's happening on our screen and talk our students through it. We need to start thinking about capturing and creating a di digital copy of all of these teaching and learning experiences, whether they're on the part of the teacher or they're by students in a think aloud. But as we, grad as we continuously capture these, we embed them back on the digital learning hub then there is not only the textual information and directions, but there's also the images and the videos and some audio podcasts. And then there also is student work and exemplars. But we further enrich this digital learning hub and provide a great space for our students to go and learn inside and outside the classroom. Last but not least, as I mentioned before, I think that teachers need to have a blogging site. They need to have a website apart from the digital learning hub where they can feel free to think and reflect uh, and basically have a little bit of dialogue about challenges and opportunities they're having in their classroom as they use these tools, as they think through this work. It's a way for us to document this reflection. It's a way for us to keep track of our own learning and go back in time, but also more importantly, it helps others online as they work through this process, as they can look at decisions that you made and that they want to come back to and they can try on their own. So I, I see this as the, the screen captures and the screencasts and then all of that great content that you create all is embedded and, and indexed and archived in your digital learning hub. And then the blog is a way for you to reflect along the process. One added benefit of the blogging site is the blogging platform basically becomes your marketing space. You can go there and if you have new classes or new material you want to promote, for the most part it would be lost over in your digital learning hub, but on your blog you can talk about the great new section or the great new unit you built on uh, the Harlem Renaissance and how you're so excited that you added in uh, Google Forms to it and you want others to take a look at it and use it in their classroom and give you some feedback. The blog is a great place to have almost like a rolling hub or a news feed about what you're involved in and what you're doing. Now as we piece together this learning management system there's a lot of different spaces that we can build in. Um, and, and on the periphery of all this we need to always think about you know, opportunities to collaborate with others or need to think about ways that we can evaluate and, and critique our own work and improve upon our product online. One of the nice things about having this work online and using technology in education is that we can continuously revise, we can iterate, we can innovate on what we've created. Um, it, along that, the same lines, we can also use this as a place to reflect and develop our own portfolio. Um, we have a lot of teacher evaluation systems starting up and if we 
make this digital learning hub and then we also have uh, an outside space like a blogging space that we can use to collect all this and reflect on it it's a great way for us to think about our own uh, you know career as a professional one of the only things that we really cannot do at least I don't advise us doing in all of this creation of your own learning management system and you know digital learning hub is grades for the most part I think that most of our schools have grade systems built in they have a, an online grading module where you can leave grades for students and submit grades I suggest that you leave your grades off on those other environments I think that unless you're very savvy and you can create your own grading program or use Google Spreadsheets or a place that you know is safe and that student grades are safe and secure then I would just trust whatever your building has in place at least for now because it'll make your job a lot easier and it's a lot safer for students so we ultimately get to the questions once again well why is this important you know why should I take the time and, it, and what we're talking about is ultimately just resigning yourself to the creation of all those office documents and all the extracurricular stuff that you would build and saying I'm going to totally start to build all of my work in the cloud and I'm gonna create this learning infrastructure that's based around my online classroom and I'm gonna jump in with both feet well the the first thing is we've talked about creating and curating your online brand there's no better way to supercharge all of this than to have an entire learning management hub and an infrastructure and a learning management system that you create and that you own and that you monitor um, the blogging piece kicks it up another level but basically this creates a online learning presence to the level of or far exceeding the level of what you would see in the traditional classroom in an off offline model so just the same way that your students will come in at the beginning of the year and see your classroom and the way you have it set up you can have that same sort of, I of identity and synchronicity as they go online and look for what you've created we don't want to have them traipsing across the internet we want you to have your online digital identity and use it for teaching and learning also as we said just uh, now we don't want our kids traipsing across the internet um, there are a lot of places for them to get lost there's a lot of places that uh, we don't want our students to be we want to basically provide one spot that is our spot online and we can send our students there they know that when they're there these are materials that we have created or curated for them our parents know that that their son or daughter when they go to that website those are materials that you handpicked and you built and you placed on that website for them to use they also don't have to you know go hunting across the internet for content through the the power of embedding codes we can basically create content elsewhere and bring it over to your website and embed it right in there so it's super important to have one identity online and you know repeatedly build revise and iterate upon that identity and not have students trying to follow your digital footprint across the internet finally one of the things that we've talked about and and, and is a big uh, topic in educational and technology environments is flipped or extended classrooms you know if if we really think about creating opportunities to bring all of our teaching materials into the cloud and if we provide ubiquitous access to teaching and learning materials and if we have a device agnostic policy where it doesn't matter what tool students are using it could be a mobile phone all the way up to a giant smart board in our classroom it really doesn't matter if we have a digital learning hub and if we have our own learning management system and we openly reflect about our thoughts as we build up this work then initially the most important piece is that we don't have to think about extending our classroom we already have okay it doesn't matter where our students are learning they could be learning at home they could be learning overseas students could be learning that aren't that are not even in our classrooms so initially it's important because we've extended the classroom beyond its traditional walls 
then also some of us have had dialogue about flipping our classroom and now mess it, you know playing with hybrid models of education this provides us with an opportunity to flip the classroom because now in order to flip the classroom you you have to really have content online that you want to use so if we have our learning management hub and if we have our learning management system set up our digital hub and our learning system then it's very easy to say okay I have all of the materials for class online on the digital hub now what I want you to do is I want you to have read that before you come to class then when we come into class we're gonna do some hands-on learning activities because I know that you should have already gone through the content so this is important because we can not only extend the classroom but in some cases if we want to we can flip the classroom. So once again, that's module five. Um, this is the digging deeper part of the digital identity module. The idea is that we're looking at opportunities to use free online tools as a way to, first of all, build up, develop, and constantly iterate and innovate on our digital learning hub. But then at the same time, that hub in many ways can be the centerpiece of a whole learning management system as we think about ways to create and curate our online identity. The idea is that that learning hub is the, the teaching space that we have set up for our students and then our blog is a workspace or a learning space where we think about our decisions and reflect on them and any and all content, any and all uh, teaching materials, they go to the digital learning hub and then we use social networks like Twitter, Google+, even if you wanted to email an Edmodo to direct our students to the digital learning hub so that they can go get that teaching, those teaching materials that we built for them.